I'm going to write a story that would appeal to me in order to connect with an audience, there's going to be certain, that's where archetypes come from. I think a lot of this is subconscious. I don't think that Disney's sitting through being like, okay, we have to show entering the unknown voluntarily to save the father from the bill. It, it, it's the reason that the initial stories had such power, which then makes them even worth telling, being adapted. The question is, does this new value set offer more is it necessary to change to fit a new value set is it necessary to change to fit a new value set yes okay so what are those changes that you think are necessary maybe in 2020 2020 okay. they're portraying women in a different way. Okay, a certain not way. A hundred years ago. Okay, so what was that way that women were portrayed back then? Uh, their only goal in life was to marry the prince. Isn't how it? how so? What are you basing that on? All the Disney movies. I think so stories can be changed to, and it's not a bad thing if you change a story, if you think you can convey a certain message. Well, the princess hasn't been saved by the prince for a while now in Disney. I, I don't... And why is that? There are problems with the young girl being abducted by the prince, who was a beast, and in Beauty and the Beast. Okay. And finally she falls in love with the prince that abducted her, and he was holding her against her will. I mean, this has been, this made the case almost to a meme status. Oh, Belle is classic Stockholm Syndrome. Uh, the little mermaid who wants to change herself, her appearance, for her love interest. Well, hey, so we just mentioned Beauty and the Beast. So that's been told in several iterations, Fifty Shades of Grey, for example. It, which is still also a controversy. Sure. So, is it possible that there is a more profound story in there that resonates with women about the taming of the beast, about finding a man who is capable of being a beast, but has a, a hidden desire to be good, and then helping him transform into being a good man. Perhaps. So is this the purpose of the. I would say that that's the underlying structure of Beauty and the Beast that makes it resonate so strongly. And that is more profound than the flaws the fact that she is abducted by a beast yes it's not good to abduct women but can you tell a story in which things are not okay occur in the effort to create an experience for the viewer what is that meaning uh we'll take an example so Pinocchio, do not lie. The necessity of accepting responsibility, not following frivolous pleasures, or you end up on the island with the lost boys who turn into donkeys by being led by the, the marionette or the, the circus leader. The necessity to follow one's conscience, Jiminy Cricket, to go into the unknown, pursue the noble, even to the point of diving into the ocean voluntarily into the unknown to rescue one's father from the belly of the beast. So there's some profound archetypes and timeless truths there still. There might be some stylistic. Would you say there are profound archetypes and timeless truths in Tolkien's work? Yes.
where she's still trying to figure out where she belongs in the world. What? Isn't that reflected in The Little Mermaid, though? Oh. When The Little Mermaid is struggling with her father, her relationship with her overbearing father, this feeling of needing to rebel, and then the chance encounter, yes, love is introduced, she actually saves, in that case, the prince will call him when he falls in the ocean. And I believe that that's how they meet. And then she journeys into the unknown to pursue whatever, which is more than just love. It's also rebelling against her father, finding her place in the world. So how is Frozen more nuanced in comparison? Though? What is there that it is in Frozen that is more nuanced? So what, what is the Little Mermaid pursuing? One. Okay. What? What is she, uh, let's say, the is love, right? And finding her place. And I forget what the, what the friction with her yeah, father so is, the overbearing that, father. So the, she wants to rebel, yeah, find rebel her again. place in the world. Find her place in the world. And pursue love. So that's three. So rebelling against, not just rebelling against, but moving away from the parent figure, right? Which is something that is an archetype that has to right, occur yeah. in journey. Father, you don't understand me. I want to. Yeah. Right. Even if there's not that friction, though, there's still that's still a an event and a thing that has to occur in life. So she does that, and she encounters randomly love, and there's probably some danger in there. I can't. I don't, and she pursues that, though. Okay. Yeah. So what is wrong with that? Nothing is wrong with it. So what makes Frozen? more nuanced a larger spectrum of emotions right? okay when you say larger spectrum of emotions uh, the same spectrum of emotions more more of them rather than okay. love, rebelling whatever i mean okay what understand. what emotions are more in frozen so the main character is a little bit more developed it's not just like this girl that rebels and then goes and pursues love and she faces some danger and then she finds... How is she more developed? Well, because of... Um, because we have a much more clear understanding of her emotional state. And How so? Why is she, because it's being presented. 